Hello, everyone. This video is an overview of homework two, which is on supervised sentiment analysis. And I would actually think of it as an experiment in cross domain sentiment analysis. Let's just walk through this notebook and I'll try to give you a feel for the problem and our thinking behind it. So the plot is the usual one. Um, we're going to introduce a task and associated data um, and help you with setting up some baselines and doing error analysis. And that's all a lead into these homework questions, which are meant to help you explore the data in meaningful ways and also set up some additional baselines that might inform ultimately your original system, which you then enter into the bake off. Fast overview, we're doing ternary, that is positive, negative, neutral sentiment analysis. And we're gonna be dealing with two data sets, the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank and a brand new assessment data set that is a dev test split of sentences drawn from restaurant reviews. We're giving you for training the SST train set and asking you to evaluate on the SST dev and test uh, and also on this new dev test split of restaurant reviews. And that's the cross domain aspect of this. You are completely unconstrained about what you do in terms of bringing in new data for training and doing things in development. The one constraint that we really need to firmly impose here is that, of course, the SST3 test set is a public test set. It's actually included in your data distribution so that other notebooks can run um, some baseline systems and compare against the literature. But that test set is completely off limits during development. It's really important that you do all your development just on the dev splits and completely ignore the fact that you have a labeled version of the SS3T3 test set. And as I say here, much of the scientific integrity of our field depends on people adhering to this honor code that is doing no development on what is test data, because test data is our own only chance to get a really clear look at how our systems are generalizing to new examples and new experiences. So please keep that in mind. The rationale behind this assignment, of course, is to help you get familiar or re-familiarize re yourself with core concepts and supervised sentiment analysis and the associated life cycle of developing systems in this space, which involves writing feature functions, trying out model architectures, hyperparameter tuning, and also possibly doing some comparisons of models using statistical tests to try to get a sense for how much meaningful progress you're making as you iterate on your system design. And we're also trying to push here in this notebook that error analysis can be a powerful way for, to, to help you find problems in your system and then address them. One more methodological note, as you'll see from this notebook, I'm encouraging you to use functionality in this sst.py module, which is part of our course code distribution. You're not required to use it. Uh, really, the only contract we need to have with you is that your original system have a predict one method that maps strings to predictions very directly. Um, but other than that, you're unconstrained. I do want to say, though, that I think sst.experiment is a flexible framework for doing lots of experiments without writing a lot of boilerplate code. So it should, if you get used to it, be a powerful basis for you for doing a lot of experiments, which I think is crucial to success here. You do some setup by loading a bunch of libraries and get a pointer to the data. And that brings us to the training set here. So this is going to load in a pandas data frame. You can see that we've got about 8,500 examples. Do review the notebook covering this data set here. There are a bunch of other options for this train reader. In particular, you can decide whether to keep or remove duplicates. And you can also decide whether you want to train on the labeled subtrees that the SST contains, which vastly increases the amount of training data you have, which will be very compute intensive, but it could be very productive. This is also a point to say, uh, again, that you are free to bring in other training sets. And in fact, it might be very productive to bring in the Dynascent um, data, data set, which is covered in a screencast for this unit. Um, that data set has a lot of sentences from restaurant reviews. And it was also labeled in exactly the same way using the same protocols as were used for creating the development set of restaurant reviews for this unit, which is importantly different, I think, from the protocols that were used for the SST. Um, so bringing in more training data, training data could help you not only with the cross domain problem, but also with the kind of label shift that has probably happened between SST and these new development data sets that we're introducing. And that does bring me to the dev sets here. So we have SST dev, that's also a pandas data frame, as well as this new bake off data of restaurant reviews, also a pandas data frame. And here you can see just three randomly chosen examples, example ID, the text of the sentence, a label, which is either positive, negative, or neutral, 
and then is subtree is always zero because these assessment data sets have only full examples, no, no labeled subtrees the way the SSD train set does. And we can get a look at the label distribution. And I'll just mention that the label distribution for the test set is very similar. It has one noteworthy property, which is that it's highly skewed. A lot of neutral examples, which I think is realistic for actual data, even review data. And then there is a skew toward positivity with negative the smallest. And this kind of label imbalance, I think is severe enough that it might impact optimization choices that you make. This next section here just sets up a soft max baseline. We use a unigrams feature function. This couldn't be simpler. We're just splitting on white space and counting the resulting tokens. And then we have this very thin wrapper around logistic regression. And those are the two pieces that come together to run here an SST.experiment. A lot of information about your experiment is stored in this variable. And what's being printed out is just a summary classification report. We have SST dev and Bake Off dev as our two assessment data frames. The results for each one of those are printed separately here. And then our Bake Off metric is this mean of the macro average F1 scores across the two data sets, exactly these two. But of course, at the Bake Off time, we'll be using the test sets. Um, so you might be guided and sort of hill climb on this number here while also attending to these two numbers which are contributing to it. So for example, you can see here that as expected, since we trained on the SST, we're doing better on the SST dev by far than we are on the new Bake Off data. The next section here just shows you another kind of baseline. Uh, and this is a deep learning baseline and RNN classifier. Our feature function is very sim simple here because we just split on white space and we, we rely on the RNN itself to do all the featureization, which is like an embedding lookup and then processing the example. So that's very simple. And then the wrapper is also very simple here. We're gonna set the vocabulary for the model the min count of two, that seems productive. And then finally run the experiment. And the one thing that's important here, the one change is that you set vectorize equals false here. Unlike in the previous baseline, we are not using scikit-learn dict vectorizers to process count dictionaries to get us from features to feature matrices. Um, here we are feeding our examples directly through into the model. Our model expects token streams with no messing about, and so vectorized false will give them a pass through all the way to the model. So remember that, otherwise this will all fall apart. But other than that, it's exactly the same setup. Let's run it here. I've got some timing information. We're gonna fast forward through this because this takes a little bit of time, but you'll see a report and I'm currently on just a, a very old CPU based Mac. So uh, this will give you a sense for the costs of development for deep learning in this space. All right, our model's early stopping criterion was met after 49 epochs. Uh, and here's our look at the results, uh, which are kind of comparable to what we saw with the softmax baseline. All right, and that brings us to error analysis, which can be an important step in improving your system. I've written a few functions that make use of all the information that is encoded in the return values for SST experiment, which I hope package together everything you would need to do rich error analysis, reproduce your results, and make use of your model in downstream experiments. Uh, here we're gonna use it for, use this function find errors. Uh, I've done a little bit of pre-processing of the errors that were found and packaged them together. And then this cell here is just an example of the kind of things that you might do. Here we're looking at cases where the softmax model was correct, the RNN was incorrect, and the correct label is positive. You could of course fiddle with those parameters here. Uh, we've got 168 examples falling into that class, and then we could look at a sample of the actual texts that fall into that group as a way of figuring out how these models differ and maybe improving one or both of them. All right, and that brings us to the homework questions. And again, these are meant to help you explore the data and set up some additional baselines that inform original system development. We're going to start with one that's data oriented. I've called this token level differences. What I'm trying to do is raise to your awareness the fact that the SST data and the new restaurant review data are just encoded in different ways at the level of tokenization. This is mainly the result of the SST being kind of the result of a historical process beginning with Pang and Lee 2005 and going on through the SST project itself. So there's some funny things about it that I think could certainly affect any kind of transfer from one domain to the other. And since you are training on SST data, uh, it's important to be aware of how it might be idiosyncratic. So that happens here. You write this function get token counts and as usual you have a test you pass the test um, you're you're in good shape 
Next question relates to the cross-domain nature of our problem, training on some of the bake-off data. In this standard paradigm, you are training on SST, evaluating on SST, and also this new bake-off data set of restaurant review sentences. What would happen if you augmented your training set with a little bit of data from the development set of restaurant review sentences? You have, might have a hunch that that's going to improve system performance. And this uh, question here simply asks you to run such an experiment as usually you have a test. I think you will find that this is very productive in helping your system get traction on the new data. And that should be a clue as to how to do a really good job in the bake off with your original system. This next question here is about feature representation, a more powerful vector averaging baseline. This is a step toward deep learning. Uh, it builds on this section of a notebook here, uh, where essentially we average together vector representations of words to represent each example. And those are the input to a simple logistic regression classifier. Uh, so those are nice low dimensional models that tend to be quite powerful. This question is asking you to replace the logistic regression with a shallow neural classifier. So maybe the more powerful part here, and also to explore a wide range of hyperparameters to that model to get a sense for which settings are best for our problem. And that brings us to BERT encoding. And this is like one step further down the line toward deep learning and fine tuning. This question is simply asking you to encode your examples using BERT, in particular, taking the summary representation above the class token, the final output there, as your summary representation of the entire example. And those become presumably the inputs to some downstream classifier or potentially a fine tuning process. Um, the idea that this is like one step better than the vector averaging that we just looked at. You do not need to conduct an experiment with SST. You're simply implementing this feature function here. But since SST experiment does make it really easy to run experiments once you've implemented the feature function, I would encourage you to choose some classifier model and see how well this does. But as usual, you have a test, and the test is just about the feature function. And it will make sure you're using all these values correctly. And that brings us to the original system. And I just want to remind you that you are unconstrained except for the fact that you cannot make any use of the SST test set during development. The labels for that are off limits, but everything else is fair game. Bring in new training data, try new model architectures, and so forth and so on. Um, we've given a few ide ideas here, but this is by no means meant to be restrictive. It's just meant to get the creative juices flowing. Other than that, this is the same pro procedure as homework one. We want a description of your system to inform the teaching team about what worked and what didn't. And it would be great if you reported your peak score, which is the macro average of the two F1 macros F1 scores for our two data sets. That's on the development set there. Uh, and that brings us to the bake off. And again, the bake off procedure is familiar. The one piece here, the crucial piece, is that you write a, per, a function, a predict one function that maps a text directly to a prediction using your original system. And I've given two examples here. Um, yours might be simpler, depending on whether or not you use the SST experiment uh, framework or not. Uh, but that all comes together here with create bake off submission where you input that function. You won't need to change this output file. And you can see that this function here loads in our two test sets, which are unlabeled, and uses your predict one function on all of those examples here, and then writes a file, which you then upload to the auto grader to grade scope. And that happens here. So I just would want to reiterate that. In all senses, the test data labels are completely off limits to us. All the development, conceptually and otherwise, should happen on the development data. 